kingdom of heaven. We trust in you. Amen. Hi, everybody. I'm here to in introduce uh, Reverend um, Clenard Childress, but I will not call him Childress anymore, Reverend Childress. I will call him Reverend Child Rescue. <laughs> 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 because he's rescuing children from the mm -hmm. abortion. In the spring of 2003, Reverend Childress birthed the website blackgenocide.org to primarily reach the African American community on the genocidal effects of abortion. In March of 2006, Reverend Clenard H. Childress authored his first book, No Shepherd's Cry. Pastor Childress and his book were featured in the 700 Club, hosted by CBN's Pat Robertson. Robertson. In 2007, Reverend Childress produced the website abomination.com to respectfully oppose the candidacy of Barack Obama, Barack Obama due to his partnership with Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. In December of 2010, Pastor Clenard Childress began Clergy for Better Choices in New York City based Clergy Information Network, partnering with Life Always, a pro-life group in Houston, Texas, a bill board hosted in South Soho, um, Manhattan. In February 2011, Manhattan with saying created, wait, what was that? Manhattan mm -hmm. with saying created by Reverend Childress, the most dangerous place for an African, oh, okay, African-American to be born is in the womb of his, of his African-American mother, helped to raise the awareness of the clergy network and reach a broader base of pastors and social activists. In February of 2015, L-E-A-R-N, LEARN, Northeast and Center for Bioethical Reform launched the All Black Life Matters Project. That's 2015. Mm -hmm. I think that was prophetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Black Life Matters <laughs> mantra has created the catalyst for the conversation we have been looking to elevate since our inception. This project has proven to be an extremely productive means to open the eyes of the public to the detriment of abortion. It's December 2nd, 2017, the Life Education and Resource Network, in recognition of a lifetime commitment to raise awareness to halt genocide by the standing spiritual, spiritual, spiritually strong in the midst of social and political changes, your fellow issue-driven brothers and sisters in Christ present you with the Irma Clardy Craven Award. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. December 15 of 2017, PBS Frontline produced the documentary Anti-Abortion Crusaders Inside the African-American Abortion Battle, where Reverend Childress, Childress Q was highly featured. There was a breakthrough documentary produced by the public broadcasting system. Pastor Childress Jr. has repeatedly been featured in World Magazine and has contributed commentary and editorials for Christianity Today, The Christian Post, Black Christian News, The Washington Times, and New Jersey Star Ledger, and is a regular col columnist at Alan Key's Renew America. Pastor Childress is joy joyously married to Regina Childress and has four children, Clenard, Thomas, Tanya, and Tir Tia. Very good. And they're, Thank you. <laughs> how old are your children now? A lot older than they were when I first started, I could say. <laughs> but, uh, are they yeah. adult children? Yes, they're adults. Oh. They have children. So oh, I'm a okay. grandparent. Oh. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we, I'd like to say to your listeners, I appreciate being here on a, uh, on a note of spirituality with the prayers going ahead of us that we can certainly address the masses because at this present time, um, America has reached a point where what we have put on our money for years we're really going to have to do and that is in, in god we trust uh, and get back to those foundations and i was listening to the bio i sent you that but i didn't i don't really read it but i remembered uh, i remembered uh the black life matters basically back in 2015 i found that to be a catalyst for what we had planned to do 
uh, and that was reach the African American community as well as the country with the message of life and the detriment of Africa of uh, African Americans were facing when it comes to the targeting of the African American community by the abortion industry. And so just to say 52% of all African American pregnancies end in abortion. Um, we make up 12.4% of the population, but yet we account for 36% of the abortions. Now, one would say, well, why is that? Well, simply because they are being marketed and targeted by the leading abortion provider, which is Planned Parenthood, which accounts for 24% of all abortions in the country. And so with its foundations rooted in racism, Margaret Sanger was the most devout racist of her time. People forget the uh, heinous comments she made concerning minorities as well as anyone whom she felt was irredeemable. Uh, and African Americans were one of them, or as she called, colored people. She said colored people are human weeds and they need to be uh, exterminated. And she often said that they were bearing children that did not need to be born and all sorts of detrimental uh, and very hateful comments that she made concerning uh, minorities in general. So we have to understand that sterilization was something that Margaret Sanger espoused, but sterilize the community that she felt that we needed less of. It was interesting that uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who sits on the Supreme Court, made a comment that was very Sanger-esque when she heard about Roe versus Wade. And she said at the time that Roe versus Wade passed, she believed, now she wasn't on the court at that time, but she was in academia and professor and basically among the elitists. And she said, we thought it was to limit or to undermine the population that we'd, of people that we didn't want too many of. Now, I said to myself, now this person at that time wasn't on the Supreme Court, but she sits on the Supreme Court with the same ideology and a great supporter of Planned Parenthood and, uh, and eugenics or abortion. So, first of all, Black Lives Matter. When 2017, uh, 15 or 17, we came up with the website, All Black Lives Matter. And why did we say that? simply because Black Lives Matters it has really never been about black lives. And it is a, a hypocritical and very, very highly fraudulent organization that is basically using race to get their agenda across. And uh, they are taking advantage of race and basically using it as a tool and a means to bring forth an agenda that is not for African-American lives is more or less for elitist African-Americans or their own uh, cultural Marxist agenda. So we have to come to grips with that. And you say, well, Reverend, why do you say that? Well, why I say is because they partner with the leading killer of African-Americans, which is Planned Parenthood. Um, Planned Parenthood is accounting for the targeting of African-Americans for abortion. Planned Parenthood partners with Black Lives Matters. That is an oxymoron. It makes no sense. It's hypocritical. It's outrageous when there's over 21 million African Americans missing right now directly due to abortion. Directly due to abortion. 21 million. I'm not talking about cancer or heart disease or accidents or any AIDS or any of the other maladies that would come to cause death in the American African American community, I'm just saying, or murder, uh, I'm just saying undoubtedly that abortion, according to the CDC statistics, is basically accounting, has accounted for 21 million African American deaths since 1973. So if you're going to talk about Black Lives Matter, that would have to include the discussion on the detriment and the genocidal effect of abortion on the African-American community. We also have to unquestionably look at the health ramifications. The fact that African-Americans are encouraged to use abortion 
as a contraceptive, they do not tell them that every time they have an abortion, they have weakened the utero lining, which makes it very difficult for African-American women to, or any woman to carry a child uh, full term. And if you're doing that repeatedly each time, you're lessening your chances of, being, of the child being able to carry full term in the position which is suitable for uh, a pregnancy. So in other words, the uterine lining has been compromised in so much so uh, if you go to your, I believe it's a pediatrician you, call, you go to when one is pregnant and you go to the doctor and the first thing he's going to ask you is uh, more or less, have you had an abortion? Because if the woman answers, well, yes, I have, you immediately become high risk, which then you have to go through a whole new regimen or, or, or means of treatment that the average woman who did not have the abortion would not have to go through. So what am I saying? Your price just skyrocketed because you've been using abortion as a contraceptive or had an abortion, which makes you high risk and therefore they have to treat you differently. That wasn't told to the young lady when she went to Planned Parenthood, nor is it told about the link between breast cancer and abortion, which is sadly uh, even more so detrimental for African-American women than uh, Caucasian women, simply because of the estrogen levels in African-American women cause it to be far more devastating in African-American women. All these things can be searched out that there is a direct link. And a uh, Joel Bren, who did a very, very uh, exhaustive study on this particular issue, said there's t uh, he had 21 conclusive tests, 21 conclusive studies that basically prove that there's a link between breast cancer and abortion. Now, what I would say, well, let's look at it from 1973. In 73, 75, 78, and then in those years, and certainly prior, breast cancer was not an issue in the African-American community with women. But since 1973, African-American women's now lead the nation in miscarriages and an alarming rise in breast cancer. That has to come from something. Something that wasn't prior before has now manifested now. Black Lives Matter should be having conferences, discussions with doctors, because that is directly affecting black lives in a genocidal uh, means. And a genocide, it has a genocidal effect on the African-American community and a detrimental physiological effect on the women that are basically having the abortions. The psychological effects, 85% at a study done out in Dayton, Ohio, 85% of women who have abortions have some type of psychological malady. Uh, the highest percentage was they could not forgive themselves, they'd be crying around the date of the particular abortion. All of these things, all of these maladies, uh, many of them that are basically unspoken, that's why you had the group Silent No More. These women get to come and share those stories. My point is this, if I am looking to improve black lives, I would have to have a discussion on, <laughs> the, uh, on abortion. Black Lives Matters not only doesn't have the discussion, but approves of abortion by partnering with Planned Parenthood. So we're basically looking at an organization whose money, basically, by founding these principles that are not in agreement with the African-American community and the sentiment of the African-American community, they are basically uh, propelling and, and, and also espousing doctrinal beliefs that are hurting African-Americans and hurting African-American women. Now, Really quick, Reverend. Yes. So in other words, where all these people are gathered together in these protests, mm. they're believing in a lie, correct? Well, it's not about black lives. If it was, you, they would take up these issues. Now, they do have some good points. And by the way, you said all these people gathering, 
right now, it, it, for every six uh, Caucasian people, there's one African American. <laughs> so obviously, the, the, this particular agenda that they're uh, once again trying to bring across has been hijacked. And there's another force, there's another agenda, there's another uh, cause that has been implemented under the guise of race and social justice. But go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's that's the question I wanted to ask. Okay. So there, there are many people who are going of a good will, they're being fooled yes. into another agenda. Oh, uh, no, there's no question about that. What's going to happen months later, there's going to be reflection. Uh, and I have to say, I've never saw so many Caucasian uh, white males burning low-income housing in Minnesota and Chicago where African Americans stay. This made absolutely no sense to me until I found out that they were employed, uh, that uh, some of them were getting as high as $300 a day, and a bonus if indeed they were arrested. And I have that from first-hand knowledge. That's not something from reading in an article. That's from a, uh, a minister friend who was with these people and whom they didn't know was not a part, that he was not a part of them. And he heard those conversations and related them to me. So the Black Lives Matter movement, but all things work together for good, has heightened, of course, the issue of black lives with most people who don't have their agenda because they're listening to them crying out for social justice. Well, then let's look at the detriment of abortion, which affects African-American lives disproportionately. Let's look at what abortion has done to the African-American community. And then let's look at you who are saying that you're for black lives, but yet you're partnering with the greatest facilitator of black death, Planned Parenthood, and you're collaborating together and more or less you're standing for the principles of eugenics and genocide. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was the most racist individual of her day and her time. You're partnering with a group that was founded in racism and had great disdain for people who were black. This is getting to be mind boggling to me and to this point even where she was called upon by Adolf Hitler of the Third Reich, the most, uh, the marquee racist regime of our era, of, of the past hundred years. This woman was tutoring uh, Adolf Hitler in his eugenic plan for Germany and extermination of colored people and Jews. Some people don't know that, that he also was exterminating people of color as well as the Jews. And he also stated in my comp that he blamed the Jews for bringing in people of color into Germany. So my point is this, they were viewed as, as they call useless eaters in Germany. And we learned from that, that in the key community that you want to target for extermination basically has to be dehumanized. And this is why you look at right now, Black Lives <clears throat> Matter, Black Lives Matter when? Obviously, Black Lives doesn't matter in the womb because you are partnering with Planned Parenthood. There's 21 million people missing because you will not acknowledge that life begins at conception. I want to interject this study that was recently just uh, revealed uh, that, and I'm sorry, I forgot who did the study. I, I didn't bring that. <laughs> who did bring the study? But the fact of the matter is it, it came out June 25th, Wednesday, and it said that, uh, for, well, 43% of Catholics do not believe that life is, uh, let's say this, 43% believe that human life is sacred, okay? 43%. Um, and so, therefore, the church must respond. Now, in the days of the civil rights movement, it was based on life being sacred, based on human personality, based on uh, the fact that life was uh, endowed by the creator with certain rights among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Presently, there's no question that the church 
should be the entity to challenge Black Lives Matter on the issue of life. And I think Protestants were at 50 percent. I think the uh, Pentecostals, uh, the, the, the evangelicals were the highest at 60. They said human life. 60%. Folks, none of those numbers are good. All right. We have to get back to the sanctity of life Amen. because right now, do you see they're saying black lives matter? Okay. Obviously, they don't believe it matters in the womb or else they wouldn't be Planned Parenthood. It's up to the church to repent. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God said he would hear from heaven, he would forgive our sin and heal the land. We as the church must address the current trending thoughts of the day, but we ourselves must believe all life is sacred from the womb to the tomb. So that data was very depressing, but it also means this current crisis is showing us the need for the church to address those who are be based in bigotry, picking out whose lives are, are worth living and whose lives should be killed or die. Uh, you saw that presently in the COVID crisis. Uh, there was a uh, total debacle of how that was handled with our seniors. And, and basically no one's been held accountable. And we have to understand that right now it's the pro-life movement that holds to the sanctity of life and that sanctity of life really is the answer for many of the social ills that we're facing uh, today. I want to also mention uh, once again Black Lives Matter basically is calling themselves a, a civil rights organization but certainly it is unquestionably broken and it's not only broken but it is totally detached from the civil rights iconic leaders of the civil rights movement of this nation. Uh, Martin Luther King's methodology was called to love, all right? He was called the prophet of love. Nina Simone called him the king of love. And certainly nonviolent protest was what he had instructed many of the, uh, the civil rights leaders uh, and all that marched with him had to handle themselves in that and that uh, in that uh, demeanor and in that nature. I just wanted to read this very quickly when he's talking about social justice. It says, "Hence, the basic question which confronts the world's oppressed: how it is the struggle against forces of injustice are to be waged." So, in other words, yes, there's social injustice, but how are we so go supposed to go about approaching dealing? <clears throat> with social injustice and he says this there are two possible answers one is to resort to too prevalent a method of physical violence and corroding hatred that's what you see today with black lives matters you see a corroding hatred and you see the espousing of physical violence and, and violence against persons and violence against property how can you explain black lives matters when you are participating in protest that is burning black businesses, uh, that is basically destroying black lives that had made investment in those businesses all of their lives, and you come by because you're in the name of social justice and you destroy their business and you feel it's okay because you're trying to make demands. That is not Dr. King. That is not the civil rights movement. The imam that is in Washington, D.C. with his name on it said he was a drum <clears throat> leader for, uh, he was a drum leader uh, for justice. Um, a dr drum master or something, a drum master for justice. My key thing is this, his methodology is far from Black Lives Matter and anybody from the church and anybody from that movement cannot embrace the methodology or the means in which Black Lives Matter is conducting their protests and asking and demanding of society their place. Uh, he goes on to say this, the danger of this method is its futility. Dr. King taught, the, taught us that it is futile to operate in violence to get your social justice or cause 
uh, to be heard and to be legislated for and for people to be able to come to the table and sit down and to be able to reason together. Violence solves no social problems. It merely creates new and more complicated ones. And that's what's going on right now by the violence and by the, uh, the corroding hatred, he said. He said, if the American Negro and the other victims of oppression should succumb to the temptation of using violence in the struggle for justice, unborn generations will live in the desolate night of bitterness and the chief legacy will be an endless reign of chaos. If there's anything that is clearly seen in these protests is chaos and, a, and seemingly an endless reign of chaos. So Black Lives Matters could not possibly be for the black community, nor for really for the essence of the furtherance of black lives. When you ignore 52% of African-American pregnancies end in abortion, when you ignore the 21 million who have already been killed by abortion, by systemic eugenic practices that are levied against African-Americans, when you take on a violent and intimidating and a, 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 a demeanor of destruction to get your legislation or get your demands met, um, this is something unquestionably as an African-American and also as a Christian, as a man of God, I could never tie or have ties with you or even participate. I will not participate with that simply because it is against the teachings of Dr. King and all that the civil rights movement had basically sought to accomplish with the demand for love. We have to look for the time that we all can sit at the table. The sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners can sit at the table of brotherhood and uh, we can basically sit down and remember and understand that as he said, that we must come to a time where America lives out its creed. Dr. King, in a, I have a dream speech, that's what he said. He said America must will come to a time that he, in that dream, that it lives out its creed. What's the creed? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all mankind was created equal and endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights, meaning rights you cannot take away, certain inalienable rights, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Black Lives Matter wants another constitution. It wants another declaration of independence. Dr. King never requested one. He said, fulfill. And any African American who is participating in Black Lives protests you must understand they must build on the last foundation and not create something new or something that they're trying to attempt with another agenda. Dr. King said, America must come to the time where they live out its Declaration of Independence and it lives out its Constitution. At that time when Dr. King said it, he said America was a schizophrenic nation because not everyone was free. Not everyone had access. We need to build on the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence where we respect, honor, life from the womb to the tomb, and everyone has access to education and resources and upward mobility. And basically, we're not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Also, Dr. King espoused the Judeo-Christian ethic. He always says his first and foremost calling, he was a Baptist minister. He talked about the importance of the church and the importance of faith. And he says he had come to do the will of God. That is absent in Black Lives Matter. So therefore, how could I ever be a partner with or even understand the ideology? Also, Dr. King espoused the family to be the building block of the church and building block of society. Black Lives Matter basically is saying that they are offended and they come to disrupt the Western nuclear uh, formation of the family or its heterosexual idea of the family. 
let me tell Black Lives Matter something very, very quickly. It's not a Western idea. The idea came in Africa, you know, in the garden, Adam and Eve, okay? So trying to affix family to a Western ideology is false and should not even be spoken with anybody with any degree of intelligence would be able to look at and know that that is something that you're trying to contrive to imply that uh, as if the uh, American founding fathers started family. No, it started in Genesis. It started in the Garden of Eden, somewhere by the Nile and the Poseidon River. And there God made man and he made woman. And he said, be fruitful and, mortal, and multiply. So the, the idea and the concept of family is something that comes from Africa. And if you know anything, you know that people of color were there in Africa and family, that family union is how God started. If Genesis is correct, okay? And I believe it is. All right, so this, uh, this cultural Marxism is basically is what it is. It is trying to take faith out. And I want to say, even if you look at the mindset of the protests, you're for black social justice, okay? So you allow black businesses to be burned. You ruin the lives of black uh, entrepreneurs. And you then basically lay claim to the fact that you're here to bring about justice. That's, that's absurdity. Okay, I want to also say un unquestionably that if you're here for social justice, you have to basically also look at the existing administration and what it has done to further the cause. Well, let's look at unemployment. Donald Trump, that administration had record low black unemployment. Let's look at black entrepreneurship. Under this administration, black entre entrepreneurship has flourish. Let's look at prison reform. This is the first administration that has brought about significant prison reform. Let's look at upward mobility in our cities. This president started the uh, Opportunity Zones, which is getting investors to invest in inner city neighborhoods and bring about uh, 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 more uh, upward and mobile businesses and, and, and infrastructure in our inner cities. So you have a prison reform, you have the Opportunity Zones, you have the lowest, the, the, the best record on unemployment. Black Lives Matters should have been in front of the White House applauding Donald Trump because the last administration didn't do any of the above. I said none of the above. Did not create the high, the lowest unemployment rate. Did not give uh, the historical black colleges. This administration has given more money to historical black colleges than any other administration prior. So, if anything, Barack Obama, if anything, Black Lives Matter, they should be applauding Donald Trump. But you're attempting to disrupt and to uh, cause anarchy in this administration. That tells me unquestionably you have another agenda and it cannot be Black Lives. Because if you look at the sociological data, you should be happy compared to past decades and past presidents. So what's up with that? Just the fact that you have not failed to commend or give any attention to these things at all lets me to know you are of another source and, another, and have another agenda. And I don't trust you, you're fraudulent. And lastly, why is Black Lives Matters money ending up in Joe Biden's campaign for, for the presidency. Why is it going to the blue wave? I forgot the name of it, the blue wave, which funds DNC candidates. People, if you give to Black Lives Matters, it appears to be the vigilante force of the DNC because that's where the money is going. As my dear father used to tell me, he said, well, you can't figure out what's going on, figure out who's getting paid. Okay, and right now, Black Lives Matter, we're giving them money and it's going to Joe Biden. It's going to uh, political organizations that divide up the money amongst their candidates. No Republican candidates 
So what is this? Let me end with this. Uh, no, we don't want you to end yet. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I okay, have two good. questions, though. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, let, let me also say this. Let's go back to uh, the days of Woodrow Wilson, who was a Klansman, and he was the president. Who marched in Washington, D.C.? The KKK, okay? The KKK were Democrats. The Ku Klux Klan basically was the armed regiment of the of the of the Democratic National Committee of the Democratic Party. It's the same thing here with Black Lives Matter and Antifa. It is absurd to me for anyone to think anything else than what I'm sharing with you, or else the facts would be different. And so, with that, we must understand as pro-lifers. We have to really present our, our message really to refute because if black lives matters and you're, playing, and you're parting with Planned Parenthood, then unquestionably that you're sending out a very jaded message and also one that you're basically saying who lives and who dies. That's bigotry. Yes. Okay. The first question I have is <clears throat> it's a widespread belief that Donald Trump is a racist and mm -hmm. and when you try to argue with the people just to know what they're where they're basing that on they get really angry and they won't even listen to what but, you have to say so tell me what you feel about that and where is that coming from it's coming. because there's no longer a, a debate anyone who ar argues with the dnc is a racist uh, donald trump was okay when he was writing checks to al sharpton and jesse jackson and the NAACP. Donald Trump was all right when he was basically hiring many African Americans for his casinos. And work. I know one personally who basically came right out of high school into a job because of uh, his willingness to hire those that wanted to work hard and basically had wanted a career. So the all the lies, basically, you become demonized. Donald Trump now, wait, I got a real good one for you. <laughs> Donald Trump was a racist when he decided he was not going to be supportive of the Democratic National Committee. And I'm going to prove it to you, folks. You mean alleged racist. Yeah, yeah, now, right. Oh, oh, yeah, well, uh, he, He's you're not right. A thank real you. Racist. Thank you. Okay. To them, he became a racist. Yes. Okay. So, so listen to this. Hollywood, Peter De Niro, uh, Meryl Streep, and some of these, Robert De Niro, whatever, uh, Meryl Streep, yelling, I mean, it's like they become so vicious towards yes. him. Madonna. But guess what? Or Madonna. Okay, Madonna, you said Meryl Streep and Peter De Niro. No, Robert. Robert, Robert De, Niro. De Niro. Okay, where were you? You did not say one word. See, I'm with folks and get ready to prove they're phonies. You didn't say one word when they put Donald Trump in Hollywood and gave him a square, gave him, uh, gave him a, a monument there right in Hollywood. He, his name is amongst Eddie Murphy and the some Chinese of the great. Theater. Yeah, the Chinese theater yeah. there. And, and I've seen it. That's yeah. why I know. I've yeah. been there. I've traveled. And I said, oh, Donald Trump's name is here amongst all of the stars? Not one of them called him a racist then. Not one of them came and said, oh, no, you shouldn't have him in amongst the stars. As a matter of fact, you had to go through them to be there on that and to have that platform. Folks, so you got to ask yourself the question, when did Donald Trump become a racist? Well, the truth of the matter is they cast those aspersions on him to demonize him because he became conservative and the real reason is because he became a Christian. Mm -hmm. His wife became a Christian first, if you did not know. She was filled with the Holy Spirit, by the way, and it was years later that he came into the faith himself, a few years later, and they both now espouse to be Christians and living for the Lord. And so, but be prior to, uh, you know, un undoubtedly, uh, he was certainly a uh, he was out there. Let's just say that. But um, that's not, that's the Donald Trump now. Donald John Trump. Okay. Second question. Mm -hmm. um, this might be a little bit involved, 
but um, I need to know what your your viewpoint is on you know the unfortunate death of George Floyd. It was uh, well, first of all, George Floyd executed, but they too had a history. If you don't know, and I they too who uh, the two knew each other. The one who. Uh, the officer knew George Floyd yes. and had run-ins with him. They both worked at a disco where the, he, uh, George Floyd was a bouncer of some sort. Um, now, until the minister confirms it, I, I don't like saying it, but they even had some reason why they had a lot of beef with one another was because, one, George Floyd was using but the officer himself very well may have been using himself, the officer, and a part of the drug culture, that officer. Then what would be the true beef between them both was a woman. And so I, it's not racial uh, anymore. It's more of a relationship. The, uh, no, yeah, I, uh, I think that cop was nasty with anyone. Yeah. Uh, but truly, uh, from what I understand, the story that was told to me, um, that indeed, and this was told by ministers who ministered to the family because he's from Houston. His family was in Houston. And I had Houston pastors uh, basically were communicating to one of the leading pastors who I know. And he said, Reverend, he said, these guys were dating and, and, and uh, cohabitating or really had relationships with the same woman. And the one woman chose George Floyd <laughs> to be the one that she was going to spend most of her time with because that particular uh, officer was married and had issues with anger or whatnot. And so he had it out for him. And he knew he could set him up or get him because he knew he still was had so a habit. It, it still is a very wrongful death. It but was an execution. It was an execution. I, I, I've never seen anything more heinous right. in, in the public square. Right. It may be something on Friday the 13th or something like that, but uh, this was so public. It was a public execution. You had people on the side trying to tell him that he's not breathing. Right. Right. Uh, you needed to, You had the officers even later saying, and these people, hey, should we turn them over? It, no, it was an execution. So the thing that needs to be cleared here is that, okay, it was wrong, and God bless him and his family. But but the issue is, was it race? Were, are they using the race, race oh, card? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, of course, that was a gift to the Democratic Party to run with. Because they're getting all this emotionalism from people. It, was, it, was, it, was, it brought about the resurgence of Black Lives Matter. You weren't even hearing about them until the incident with George Floyd. That means the DNC now activates Black Lives Matter. And here's the key. And this is what I was saying to earlier, that their agenda is not about black lives. What are you doing protesting in front of the president that has done more for black people mm -hmm. than any other president prior? Why are you in front of his mansion? Why are you at Trump Tower? This is the president that has done more for the African-American community than any other president in my lifetime. Okay, so why are you protesting him? And see, that lets me know it's the DNC. Mm -hmm. It's the players. They say we have to connect the death of George Floyd to Donald Trump as far as racism is concerned. Now, folks, I know you got brains out there, right? Okay, mm -hmm. are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. You pull down the statue of Robert E. Lee. Okay, Confederate. I, I may be able to relate with that. Then you pull down the statue of Ulysses Grant. Okay, what's up? What's going on? What's the story here? Now, Ulysses Grant fought for... African Americans and slaves to be free. Then, okay, you pulled down or tried to pull down the statue, a statue of Abraham Lincoln, okay, who was the president who passed the Emancipation Proclamation. Amazing. Okay, now what else doubly is wrong with that? When Martin Luther King decided he was going to give his most important speech ever in his life. What, wh whose figure stood behind him when he gave that speech? And who did he choose to stand behind, stand in front of, to, he, that this figure would be in the background? Abraham Lincoln, okay? 
Now you're trying to tear those things down. See, that's where you made a big mistake because what you're really trying to do is destroy American history and anything good about American history or anything bad. You're just trying to destroy America, okay? This is not about George Floyd and justice, social justice. This is not about even police reform, okay? It's about you and insurgents trying to disrupt a sitting president, a, a, a coup, if you want to call it that, and bring about your own uh, vision of justice or your own, so, and it's cultural Marxism, let's just face it, socialism, and you're using the Democratic Party and race to do it. Race is your biggest tool, but that's in the, uh, that's in the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, I don't want to say the rule book, there's another name for it, but nevertheless, uh, that's in the manifesto. Of yes. the uh, of the Marxism yes. of, uh, of Air, Bill Ayers yes. and all the that you have to use a, a wedge and in America it's race. I mean it's a, it's shocking the things that they said that they would do and that they're doing taking over the institutions of the of education, even medicine. This has been a long term plan, folks. But this president they didn't figure on Donald Trump course who did <laughs> they didn't figure on Donald Trump and Donald Trump has one goal in mind believe him when he says this he does want to make America great and he says great again I'm not gonna argue with great again and great he wants to make America great he wants this nation to be the greatest nation again on the face of the earth he has no other objective he doesn't need to make any more money he is there with that agenda and these folks are there to bring about uh, uh, socialism, Marxism, whatever you would like. Certainly, it's not the America that Dr. King said would be at present. He said one day we will get to the promised land and that indeed America would live out its creed. If America lives out its creed, it cannot be any cultural Marxism and it cannot be any socialism and it cannot be any communism. And so when Donald Trump in the State of the Union stood up and said, um, this nation will never be a socialist nation, it'll never be a, a, a nation other than a free market system, other than a democracy or a republic, um, then you saw people in the Congress, many of them wince and, gr and, and, and grimace. That should have scared uh, America. But they're here and, that, and the fight is on, but I believe we win. Amen. So, um, Reverend, I just wanted to bring up a, a, a point that you made, and uh, we went over, but this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a point you made really hammers it down. You said that um, it's it's uh, this uh, black black um, the 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 abortion, yeah. the abortion. The Democrats are pushing abortions. Just like Sanger started it, mm -hmm. it looks like the DNC is continuing it. It's in the and platform. Yeah. It's in the platform, and it almost looks like the Black Lives Matter, it, it doesn't mean what its title is. No. In fact, it means let's eliminate a whole a race. Yes. It's uh, like, because not only is it pushing abortion, uh, it's the, the first... The first um, uh, thing that Sanger was trying to do with the, what did she call it? She called it um, the unperfect race or something, or the un. Oh, the Aryan race. Or, or uh, the, the, uh, I forgot what she called it, but right. she called it a name, and people were buying her her mm -hmm. her stance, but um, this abortion, as you said, is harming the woman's body. Yes. So like, what's gonna happen now? What's mm -hmm. gonna happen? You're eliminating. A, it's a, how many abortions? Have them there been with the black well, Americans? With what we have, the da the data that we have, it very well could be worse. It is unquestionably over 21 million. And that's and, like half pregnancies, right? And, and since there is only around 36, 37 million African Americans now, you can see the devastation. It's what what what's going to happen to the black population? They're not seeing the big picture. Well, right now, the African American community is beneath the replacement level. You need 2.2. Each mother has to, each woman has to have 2.2 children. 
Uh, right now, I believe it's 1.96, 1.96. So we're beneath the replacement level of the given. Uh, and, and, and the scary part of that, that's even with immigration because uh, they come with a different value system, uh, the, the, more of the Judeo-ethic Christian value. So they were having children uh, far more so than the indigenous African-American that is basically kind of bought into this secularism and this anti-faith and anti-church. Uh, we got our work cut out and anti-family <laughs> and anti-family like you, was the you, other get, thing you well, get more money from yeah. the government if you're single rather than married well yes if you choose to stay on that level that was uh, by design and that's yes. another program without question so he's coming back yes yeah, <laughs> so uh, anything just like black lives matter and people have to connect the dots we're against your um, idealism or your ideology or your belief in the uh, nuclear family of one man one woman well that sounds like also the LGBT agenda mm -hmm. that is that has crept in and so they partner now I know people know that black lives matters they say was started by three lesbian women that I don't hold them too much against that but when you try to come at the definition of family uh, basically trying to correct the, uh, a definition and, a, and an equation uh, that God created and say this is better and had it not worked for African Americans all social the best all sociological data shows that children do better when they have both parents mm -hmm. okay um, and also ethically speaking uh, that African American men do better when they're married so um, you're coming in saying you're trying to disrupt all that basically sounds just what something Karl Marx would do uh, they, he would try to interject a new sense of what the family unit is uh, take out the free market system uh, build a a, 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 um, a society uh, oh, there's a word that basically unquestionably the African American Museum uh, basically is designed and this is why we were protesting out in front of it to create a feeling of anarchy and that's not the word I'm really looking for it'll come to me hopefully before the programs are, are over and, and, and it's causing people African Americans to go in that museum and come out and not feel good about being American mm -hmm. not, and yes we have a history of the past but let's talk about some of the good things that have happened since then and so um, making us feel, uh, making many of the younger people, especially the younger generation, agree, uh, a grievance, a, a have a grievance against the country, to create a grievance culture. That's what Black Lives Matter is about. They're always pointing at something was wrong, but never come up with any solutions on how to ad 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 uh, address it. And their only uh, means and methodology is violence and destruction of pulling down statues and corrupting this. Banish the police? Are you crazy? I mean, this, this is absurd. And all Rasmussen has a great poll. 64% of African Americans said, no, we do not want that. Um, now, that's the 64% that were bold enough to stand up because people are afraid to come up against the Black Lives Matter agenda and speak what they really want to say. So that 64% is probably like around 85, 90%. But they were bold enough to say, no, that's wrong. Mm. We need people to stand up and, and those that really understand the truth. And some people who don't take your words for face value, research it. Just look at it. Look at our history. Absolutely. It's so Im important to do that. We should know our American history anyway. Mm -hmm. um, just study it and then start getting that bravery to go up and stand up for mm -hmm. our country. Because we need to claim it back. This is crazy, what we're seeing in the news every day. Everybody's I, living in fear. And I would say, yes, when we have our public school system uh, that is basically infusing the minds of our young people with this secular mindset and this indifference about life, it is very important for us to recognize that we have to gain that ground back again. Because yes. once again, uh, history is important, but if that history is taught to us so we have a, a grievance against the country mm -hmm. then there's no right. patriotism there's no willingness right. to sacrifice to make 
are our nation great? And that's that is what's happening, and it's sad. And but the sadder part of it is that the, in that communist manifesto, they said that's what they would do. They would create this culture of grievance. And that's how they would overturn the country. They said they can't be by tanks and guns. They wouldn't win that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can win it from within, and that's the fight that we're in. And pro-life activism refutes all of that. They are very high on social engineering. They wanted to tell who lives, who dies. Who, HR 6666, mm. the, human, the uh, COVID tracing bill, whatever. That, if you read through that bill, <laughs> that, that goes beyond oh, <laughs> Big Brother. Uh, what is it, George Orville's book? I forgot the name of the author. Uh -oh. 1984. 1984. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes <laughs> that looks makes 1984 look like Sesame Street. I'm telling you, this is yeah. crazy. I'm we got to get educated said, ourselves. You A lot of this me? stuff is slipping in. Yeah, and, and people don't know about and it. And the only people that fight against mm -hmm. many of these bills that are attempting to create a uh, socialist or communist stronghold are, are pro-life people, are conservative people. The vaccine people of New Jersey, I salute you because you're heroes. Uh, it was just prior to the COVID can, uh, pandemic that the vaccine people of New Jersey and the ralliers uh, pushed back that law. We were almost had it as a law in New Jersey and, and they're gonna come again. And they're going to try and use this crisis to say, see, we need this. And no, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not need uh, uh, mandatory vaccines. As a matter of fact, this has all been planned. so hyped, so mm -hmm. planned, and so uh, insidious. It's, it's, it's Pray for the conversion of um, Gates. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of hard. I'm gonna do that though. You know, you 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 pointed it out. You yes. pointed it out because Kim uh, Clement. Kim Clement. If, yeah. if he said it, I will pray. I will okay, pray. let's pray for him and let's pray for our country. We we ask you, um, Reverend, if you could say a prayer before we close. And thank you so much. Sure, thank Heavenly Father, we thank you that indeed you are still on the throne. And Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We thank you for the blessing of those who gave ear to hear today. And Lord, we don't want to sound uh, hopeless. We don't want to sound so much so that people walk away in fear and in trepidation and fearful about the things that they see coming upon the earth. But Lord, we look forward to the fight. We look forward to faith. We are more than conquerors. And we thank you, dear Lord, for your will, your purpose being worked in us and that we will bring about social justice for the children in the womb and social justice for our seniors and that the sanctity of life would once again take the pinnacle of our thoughts and the priority of our hearts and minds and that we would glorify you in all that we do and say. And we thank you for our president. We thank you for this administration. And we thank you that they imagine a wicked device against him that they are unable to perform. And no weapon formed against this nation shall prosper. And thank you, dear Lord, for your faithfulness and love for us. Amen. Amen. Thank oh, you. in the name of the Father, Father and Son, and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Bless you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Let's come back, back again tomorrow. We got to keep on praying. <laughs>